This week I got a lot of things done that felt like back-end stuff, but is actually the meat of the gameplay. I managed to get all of the resources and power supply things bolted down. I managed to burn the crewmate alive. And let's just get into it. First though, if you don't know who I am, my name is Helper Wesley, I've made these games, and I make weekly devlogs. So the first thing I needed to get done was the time and date system, which sounds benign, but the entire game revolves around this time system. In the original game, you would have to spend time to fix machines and to do any kind of actions. So it was almost like a pseudo board game. But in this remake, I want to make it so that everything is real time. And so the clock is kind of important. It's really basic, it's literally just a timer that ticks, and then when it reaches the end of the timer, it, it ticks a variable up. And then while that variable is ticked up, everything kind of collapses down and happens all at once. So it checks to see what machines have what status, and how much power they've burned, and how much of their resource they've generated, and stuff like that. And then it kind of adds all that up, and then crams it all out. And then the variable switches back to zero, so it doesn't do that again, until the time changes again. But before I got that far into it, I got stuck on something. The text wasn't aligning to the right. With GDevelop, there's this quirk where text only aligns if it's multi-line. So if there's multiple lines in the text object, then it will align to the center or to the left or right, depending on how you have it set up. But there needs to be multiple lines in the text object or else it won't do it. I'm not sure why, but that's just the way it's set up. So in the past, I've used a cheat where I add a bunch of text at the bottom and then center it, and that way it tends to work. But the BBC text, for some reason, I'm not sure what's going on. I asked in the Discord and got a bit of help, but I think it's canceling the word wrapping and changing the width of the text object so that when you go to center it, the text moves way over to the right, which is not what I wanted. So the cheat for this I'm not sure about yet because I want to use the BB text, but if this is consistent then maybe I'll have to switch to the, just a the regular text object, which won't be as good, but if I can't align the text then I'm going to need to do that. But the cheat I used for this specific one was created a 0, 0, colon, 0, 0. And because the zeros are wider than everything else in the font, when it wants to move, it doesn't move because it, the, the zeros are bigger. Anyhow, that was kind of a lot of time to waste on just aligning text, but since the clock is going to be kind of a, an important thing, I just wanted that to look right. So now that I have the time in place, I'm able to use that time ticker to affect the other variables, like machine degradation. And basically this is just a simple, if the machine is on, it subtracts 1, and if the machine is on high, it subtracts 2 from the condition every hour. In the original game I was making, there was a lot of extra conditions that just kind of weighed down the whole thing, and I'm sure the complexity of it was part of the reason why I quit that game. So I'm trying to keep it very simple this time around. And so the machinery degrades and produces things based on a multiple of what its current status is. 0, 1, or 2. Off, on, or high. Back when I started, I created this like flowchart to kind of help myself visualize where things were and how things were going to flow through the machines. So like the electrolyzer at the very beginning will take in salt water and through ele electrolysis? Electrolysis. Elect by putting electricity through the water, <laughs> it will separate the oxygen and hydrogen to create oxygen and hydrogen gas separately, which will then go to separate machines to do separate things. The excess hydrogen will be released into the ocean, and then the harvested oxygen will be used to breathe, but then you'll also use some of that oxygen and hydrogen to fuel the burner, which will be generating the heat for the station that you're in, as well as drinkable water for your crewmate. There's more things involved in it too, but we'll get into that in another video. So essentially I went through and made sure that everything on the hourly tick is generating something or losing something or like the crewman will lose mentality and gain tiredness over time and then if they're doing something on one of the machines then they'll gain more tiredness. I don't think working will affect their mentality. I think I want to reserve that for like when things are going to hell, not just because they're doing general maintenance. So on top of every machine consuming something and then producing something, it's also always consuming power. The power system was set up with catch-all variables 
to kind of collect all the running machines and the lights that are on to tell you how much energy you're burning overall. And this balance will be at first perfect, but over time as machines degrade and as you're forced to turn on machines onto high power, which will drain more power, you'll need to sacrifice things like the lights or machines that don't need to be on at the moment. So you'll be balancing those out to kind of make things work. And speaking of balancing, I got everything set up to run and didn't set up any balancing for the temperature or caps for any of the resources, which basically meant that this was happening. When the burner was on, it was just kind of going up. So somehow, because the code's not there yet, we have a crewman who is perfectly well with 100% condition, but they're living in a research station that's at 212 degrees Celsius. So it's a bit toasty, but they seem to be doing fine, so who's really to judge if the code's not working? Maybe he just likes it at 212 degrees. So I went through when I was working on the caps for the game, like the current power supply being always less than the maximum storable power. And then I was setting up the crewman's mentality, which is basically based on how many lights you have on in the station. The largest impactors on your crewman's mentality are light sources and the story points. So basically I had it set up so that you have seven lights altogether. There are seven different rooms that have lights on, and then I divided that by the number of lights on. So the seven on top would then eventually be divided by seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and would increase the amount that your mentality is being drained by. And then I used seal or floor, I can't remember which one it was, but one of those two to round up or down the number to the nearest integer. But of course, if you turn off all of the lights, you're then dividing by zero, and I'm surprised I've never done this before, but apparently that reads out infinity. It's funny that I've done this for a year now and I've never accidentally divided by zero. So I changed that to seven subtracted by the number of lights that are on, which is a lot less reality bending and works better in the code. So now that everything is hopefully balanced, I'll explain where the trickiness of this game comes in. So focusing on temperature specifically, when the burner is at 100% condition and on normal, it will balance out with the natural cooling that's happening on the station, because the station is underwater. So as long as your condition is above a certain number and you just leave it on normal, then temperature will be fine and you won't have to worry about it. But if your machine then drops to a certain condition level, like halfway down or something, then suddenly you have to put the machine on high just to keep up with the temperature. And if you have your machine put on high, then you're draining more power, which means you need to shut down something else, or you're going to trip the breaker, and then it's not going to work anyways. So basically every machine is in this like perfect balance, and the trickiness will come into play when you have to worry about what things you're able to shut down for the time being so that you can focus on making this thing work. And maybe I'm just weird, but I personally think that kind of gameplay is really fun. And by the way, the speeds that you're seeing here now are not the speeds that will be in-game. The game will be much more chill than this. Next week I'm probably going to do more for the art pack again, because like I said in a previous video, this month is just screwed and those art videos save me a lot of time. Next week I'm going to make some tools and weapons, because I mentioned that in the last video. But I'm also going to make crystals because somebody suggested it in the comments. And that's one of those things that can really be used in a lot of different game types. So I really should have done that from the start, which is why I should really be asking like on Twitter or on our Discord or something, what sorts of things I should be making for these packs, rather than just making whatever I feel like is fun to make. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video, maybe click on that subscribe button. And if you want to talk to me personally, the link to our Discord is down below. It's called the Game Dev Fireside, and it's a pretty chill place to hang out and talk game dev. And if you decide to click on that link, then I'll see you there.